Okay, hello ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, I promised in the Discord I'd show you the models that we showed on Computex. Uh, in one way or the other, unfortunately, I have still like really bad coughing, so I already can only apologize. Um, yeah, it might be disturbing a little bit, and this is completely improvised. I'm not a videographer or anything of the kind that take pictures uh, that I like, but um, yeah, video is something else. But yeah, anyway, I uh, try to make, make the best of it. At some point, uh, we'll also do a live video once I figured out how this works in either YouTube or Discord, then we can can ask me questions on the go. Um, yeah, and I can explain probably things I won't explain now for either being too nervous or not having any script or yeah, whatever uh, other reason. So, okay, I guess we just um, start from somewhere. So these two are OP1, our new smaller mouse. Um, this has been in development since October 2020. The shape um, yeah, was incredibly... It's quite complex, but it was incredibly efficient to make from what we had in mind at the point. Also big uh, shout out to... Yeah, not just our 3D designer, also our clay uh, designer Adrian, who helped me tremendously with this. And it was extremely fluid and efficient workflow, just saying, okay, I don't have, sadly don't have the clay model. Um, here, otherwise I would have shown. Yeah, I can can do this at another time to show you from start to finish, like how it started. I mean, obviously, you don't have only have one clay model that we changed the whole time, so I can show only pictures of this. But um, yeah, there have been several 3D prints um, to what we ended up using. So the shape itself only took yeah two weeks to make, and we did one single change. Uh, one year after when we got the final final sample because there was some yeah some needed to correlate the actual sample with what we 2d printed because the 2d print was tiny bit smaller uh, in the width and there was one part on the back that was just felt in a way it was the only change we have done afterwards all the other changes were all done internally so yeah, it took, I mean, COVID took a part of this taking super, super long, but still, yeah, we needed, ended up needing two and a half years. But already pre-production wise, we made so many iterations of this, probably more than some other mice uh, have in their whole life cycle while they're on the market. So I'm very positive that hopefully, I mean, you can never account for everything, but yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, the amount of, uh, Things that are not right with the mouse are relatively, yeah, little. So, okay, what did we do? So from, um, I mean, the black one is a bit, little bit harder to see on screen. That's why also on Computex, I prefer to show the white mice. It is actually a super early sample of the XM2WE. Um, I don't have a newer one here. So yeah, this will have to do, but nothing really changes, just a sticker missing, so. Uh, it looks uh, the way it looks and yeah, maybe the coating is a bit um now yeah, the color is a bit off but okay whatever so i hope the angle still makes it somewhat visible if you compare them directly you can see out of focus yeah that the op1 is a lot um thinner otherwise uh i'm not sure i can show this properly i mean the you can see that it's a lot thinner, but the length is not that much different. Uh, no idea, I can show this properly on in this angle on screen. Yeah, I can see it. this is the difference in the front. But the width with the, and the, yeah, the height I can't show with this angle. It's uh, lower, but yeah, not that much lower. So what we first did, obviously, um, 3D printed a smaller version of the XM2W, I mean XM1 at the time, XM1 shape. But when I got to the width that I wanted for the OP1, 
it was way too short so it just didn't feel just didn't feel right and similar I mean I have one I'm so Atlantis Mini here now it kind of forces you to hold it in the middle there is because it's like really hard slopes like huge, huge angles curves and on the side so kind of doesn't feel right if you want to hold it anywhere else and this was pretty much the reason we didn't want a scaled down version which would have worked in, to some extent but I yeah, just wanted to do it right uh, and then I mean if demand is there we can still make uh, XM2 mini so to speak by scaling this shape down on the other hand we could also do a OP1 XL by <laughs> making this shape a little bigger so yeah there's possibilities but uh, whatever first uh, first the shape so okay we slimmed it down I mean made it smaller in all the dimensions the thinness is the most notable difference then yeah I'm like when it's this thin I mean first I actually used it as a one-to-one -one mouse so to speak so my uh, what is it pinky finger in English not even sure pinky finger wasn't even touching a mouse so using it for like this most of the time but after half a year I kind of uh, liked developed into this grip and that was also the main intention of yeah raising the side walls um, at least a tiny bit it's I mean it's still there's not there's not too much area on top it's mostly on the side because the buttons are already because of the reduced um, width the buttons are already kind of tiny and by making this uh, latch larger would make the buttons even smaller so yeah this is what we settled with but uh, yeah, long story short, I wanted to have more options to grip the mouse and with buttons to the outside of the mouse, it just didn't quite work for a small mouse. So there was this and uh, another thing that I already mentioned earlier was the curves were very aggressive on a smaller X amount shape because all the, the radius, if you make it smaller, it's even more uh, of a radius. So. Yeah, I didn't want wanted wanted to have a more, I mean, less aggressive sides like flatter sides. They're still not not sure if you can actually can see uh, how they hold this. It's not with the shadow. I can see that it's not flat flat. They still it still follows the XM one DNA. Also, when you see the I mean, this camera is facing away from me. Jeez, everything is weird. Okay, yeah, if you. I have the curve that from the side is exactly the same curve as or very and uh, nearly the exact same curve that from the XM1 so they share the same like concept design concept just some tiny minor tiny changes like the side walls have been changed um, I also wanted I mean it's also a little bit uh, in the beginning at least uh, when you do prototyping is trial and error so the buttons on the XM1 or no XM2 they are quite large and I mean clicking them in the back is not really what was intended but if it's possible I mean some people will then click and probably complain because the click here is not as nice as it is here because the lever is a lot longer in the back so yeah we reduced the, the button size and made well we here we had this kind of like uh, angled, I mean, kind of, don't even know how to, like, kind of not really triangle, but it goes into this direction. Shape buttons, I wanted to have straight buttons so the holders inside are also straight, and you press the button, it's just going down as you would expect without uh, any, like, having to tilt it in itself, so just to make the construction simpler. Yeah, I guess that's one way to describe it. Or how I can describe it. So um, that is the button size. Then yeah, I tr also try to make the buttons fit with the side buttons, but then they were also too long, so we settled somewhere in between. Like the whole design concept first was um, function first, then design after. <laughs> so that was the there was no compromise in functionality when the design had to suffer. 
So for the side buttons, or there's a whole, I mean, I could talk one hour just about the side buttons. I think, yeah, we have done, yeah, I need to count. I mean, well over 50, probably 70-ish uh, different designs. In the beginning, they were like extremely large. So you could just like roll up your thumb. That was my, my intention to just, okay, you just move your thumb up a little bit to activate them. But yeah, then um, having in mind that there might be some other grips that where the side buttons might get in the way. So reduce them a little and it, I mean, it looked tremendously ugly. There is no way to, yeah, <laughs> to talk. I mean, I have some screenshots somewhere, you can show them uh, at some point. It was extremely ugly because they were, they were really large, like a lot larger than this. I'm wondering if I, yeah, I can show pictures. So, um, yeah, that was a whole thing. And then, yeah, I wanted some that are uh, flush with the shell in the back. So you can actually do this without any, anything in a way. Um, it, they still work um, the way they are shaped three dimensionally. Also probably impossible to show now. So I notice I'm on the wrong focus setting and yeah, you can't see the back of the camera. So there's no way for me to change this now. Um, yeah, so you can still roll them, uh, roll the finger up and they are not too large. So there's some space below for your thumb placement, but also not too tiny. So they are kind of, uh, yeah, completely useless to press. So it was a compromise. I uh, went with the logo in the front. Actually, I had this first before we did it on XM 2W because, yeah, I just, I mean, the logo in the back is nice for marketing, but it just looks nicer, in my opinion, yeah, when it's in the front. So, luckily, I was able to <laughs> get this point across to everyone involved in the process. <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, mostly position um, is not exactly the same as XM. Uh, one slash XM to W. I'm not sure you can see in the front. It's a, yeah relatively. I mean, this is a tiny bit further back than it is here. But I mean, yeah, I shouldn't compare them too much. I mean, it's really how the shape is from the back to the front. Not I mean, the buttons could be longer. Mouse could be longer, which would have next to zero effect on how you grip the mouse. So that's why dimensions are also a bit misleading. It's uh, yeah, how the shape is in the back. Can you push it further back? Oh yeah, further back, by the way, that's uh, another clue. I tried to get the, um, I tried a lot of different length, like 1% smaller, 1% wider, um, yeah, then in half percentage steps, shorter, a lot shorter, um, longer. So what I opted to do was, um, I mean, came up with this length simply because in the back it's slightly, the angle is, or the curve is slightly different from the XM2 curve. So it's basically up to you as a user how far you want to push it into your palm. If you want a tiny bit of, or tiny bit of contact or no contact, um, this is like up to you. Of course, your grip uh, moves further forward if you push it further into your hand. Also then, that's what I try to do with the side so that it can still be used. Uh, if you push it in really far, but if you also, I mean, if you large, have large hands, you can do a fingertip grip on this, even though it's relatively long. But yeah, of course, I mean, there is no one shape for everyone. I try to have the best compromise without, on the other hand, compromising any functionality for what it's supposed to be, like a smaller um, XM style clock grip mouse. And yeah, I mean, so far feedback on Computex was kind of good to see that. Uh, yeah, it wasn't not just it was not just my and uh, our internal end game gear perception that the shape works for a lot of people. Also, that's what people told us during the show. So yeah, that's uh, it's kind of a relief. Okay, so that's uh, it's completely random. What I'm talking talking about shape, talking about buttons, talking about side buttons. Um, mouse wheel placement, otherwise the uh, dimensions are the, they are the same um, sized wheels, different construction internally, but yeah, same sized wheels, also same as uh, XM1. Um, then 
on the bottom, I already showed the bottom just when I turned it out earlier. So bottom, um, we have yeah another like hybrid um, design. So it comes with a small sk skates pre-installed. <clears throat> it's not supposed to come with a sensor skate. This uh, is gonna be in the packaging. Um, yeah, so you can edit if you have a soft pad and if you don't have a soft pad you can just leave it in the packaging. So that's uh, not right here. <coughs> My apologies. Other than that, um, you can also exchange the smaller skates against a larger skate. And yeah, the, in the back this was another whole monthly, not monthly, couple of months long not a discussion, yeah, it was back to the drawing board so many times of the different skate designs, I think yeah, easy, or easily also over 50 different designs, even more I mean, this is, as you can draw this in paint, it's only 2D at first and uh, so I was discussing um, where do the screw, ho screw holes go and then, because I didn't want holes in the skates um, but I also wanted to have large skates and small skates and how do you do this without affecting the screws um, yeah why the screw holes I mean yeah I think I will comment on this on the wired version uh, so yeah it's, I wanted to have the screws uh, to be accessible and there was uh, yeah, a whole okay and they can't the screws can't be too far from the back and also not too far from the sides and uh, yada yada 50 versions later I think he changed it three times on the actual samples because the other the first ones we had were too um, the edges were too sharp I mean it looked nice on the design looked nice on pictures and renders but on actual usage uh, yeah if you pushed it down too much uh, Clyde was uh, wasn't good so this is what we went with um, so it's a four part a skate design these are a tiny bit tricky when <laughs> you want to glue them on they look very similar but they are not symmetric so they this is this tiny piece round piece here it's procuring a tiny bit further to the inside and on the other side but yeah it I mean uh, it's gonna work I hope and the large one I think yeah, I have one one mouse uh, where the large set is applied so uh, it looks like this minus the sensor skate. Also has the holes because, like I said, accessing the screws um, or the inside of the mouse was uh, an important feature for me. But yeah, again, just to give options, this is uh, pretty much um, what I, I wanted to have originally. I mean, I wanted to have similar design skates like we have uh, on XM2W, so this being straight. But inside, on the inside, there was just not was no possibility to move the buttons further up um, than what it is now so yeah it's a tiny compromise I mean they are different size from the width so they wouldn't have fit anyway I just wanted to have similar design but long story short also throughout the whole OP1 range I mean I already teased that there's gonna be more uh, models um, they will all have the same um, skate design also wired and wireless have the same skate design so other than the large and the small uh, skate sets there's not gonna be a wireless OP1 skate set and the wired different wired OP1 skate set so it should be fairly easy for third party suppliers to yeah offer their own skate sets that fit on all the OP1 models yeah, okay, that's uh, screws being accessible. Then we have, I mean, feature-wise, XM2 WE, OP1 WE is the exact same internal specs. I mean, of course, different PCB size, um, different battery holder, and the battery is different. Here we have 410 milliampere hour battery, and for the OP1, we opted for the 335 milliampere battery, simply for yeah, tiny bit more weight saving and um, tiny bit better weight balance. Other than that, it's the same. So we have Pixel PAW3370, a sensor, we have Kaiwa. It's not actually pr pronounced Kaiwa because it's Chinese, it's the name. It's not Kyle. <laughs> Some people uh, tried to correct me on this, but yeah, it's Kaiwa. I go optical switches. Um, weight is 
58.5 there's always uh, slight differences in paint thickness plastic thickness pcb thickness gate thickness so it's a uh, yeah plus minus 0 0.5 um and scales are not that accurate uh, so yeah 58.5 it's not the lightest mouse but um i mean you started with the wired development with 46 grams 46 point i can't even remember three or yeah i think 40 46.3 grams for the first decent prototype but um, had to eliminate side flags um, had to strengthen after drop test some other areas of the mouse so it ended up 10% being 10% heavier so the wired version is um, 50.5 for the non RGB and the RGB is one gram more 0 0.4 grams for the one LED that is inside um, and the rest is just the different material, the transparent material, and a tiny bit different uh, coating on the outside. So that's the one crumb difference. And from the 50.5 to 58.5 of the OP1WE, the difference is just, I mean, you add the 335 milliampere battery, that is seven point, I mean, also varies around 7.4 grams. You have a battery holder, then you have the USB-C that is actually quite heavy but you don't have the piece of internal cable the bottom plate looks tiny bit different but yeah you don't really save much so literally battery battery holder that's the eight gram difference uh, that you get out of it also the sticker is has to be larger so yeah it is always uh this is what it is but uh, same shape you could also take the top shell is exactly the same just the bottom plate and the pcb uh, it's different, um, also the PCB uh, holders are slightly different on wireless and wired, but you could put the, say you have the white frost wired shell, you could put it on a black uh, bottom plate of the OP1WE, that would work if someone wanted to do this or mix other parts. You just need, if you want a wireless, you need to use the bottom plate and the top you can change this. the buttons are the same the side buttons are the same the wheel is the same so yeah okay um cabo sorry cabo go main switch optical switches they feel a tiny bit different because implementation physically is different from um what you have in the xm2w e uh, encoder is the same but a different size so it's also ttc silver but uh, actually a custom design which is more durable and wider. It's also one reason why we didn't go for the TTC Gold that is quite famous nowadays because in our tests it just wasn't as reliable over time. So TTC Silver was a lot better, especially the design, the wider design that we used. So that's what we went with. Uh, yeah, PAW3370, simply because its, uh, its performance is literally the same uh, for 1000 Hertz then the 3395 I mean on paper it is not but yeah in a practical tests I mean you couldn't uh, really tell the difference between the two so uh, yeah we went with this also it's a cost for cost reasons I mean this is kind of the budget or budget mice yeah, actually um, you can also show the the packaging, I mean, this is not the final version, but uh, yeah, almost final. So, if you want WE, the way it is on there, there's this, there's more of the features. Then I just made sure of I don't forget, any, forget anything. But yeah, oh, side buttons are, uh, and middle mouse button are, um, middle mouse button also, I mean, this is literally the same as XM2WE. But from XM1R, where we had a tactile switch, we wanted to have a, like a normal switch, um, also with a longer lifetime. So we went with the Kaiwa GM2, a customized GM2. Uh, simply also for reasons, um, it felt uh, the nicest. It's not so much about the rating. I mean, it's literally just what feels the nicest. And this is, of course, there is different people having different preferences um, 
I mean, it is kind of a little bit of an egoistic choice at some point. What I thought was the nicest I went with using, then asked people to try different uh, switches and they all said, I mean, without telling them what's inside, doing blind tests basically, they all said, um, yeah, GM2 feels the nicest of the selection I gave them. So uh, this is that. I mean, yeah, I can also show the inside, um, nothing too special. I have, I have this part. Um, you pull it out and on top here is the manual, I mean, quick start guide and a compliance guide. Then you have the mouse that is should come screwed. This one is not. But yeah, it's quite easy to as a sneak peek to take it apart. So all you need to do is uh, remove these two screws and then you can flip it open. Yeah, then cable. Same as XM 2WE with the raised stress relief that was originally designed for the Wired OP1 that had USB-C in a very early uh, inception of the mouse but it was just USB-C in the front on a wired mouse it was just too front heavy there were so many drawbacks in the end that we opted to not use it but of course kept the design for the in case you want to charge the mouse and still play um, same dongle just different no, it's already etched actually I've never seen this <laughs> first time I opened this yeah it was OP1WE on the can probably see it. Don't have the macro lens on the camera, but yeah, the standard dongle that we uh, also have for XM2WE, the adapter. Yeah, I should really have changed the focus. My bad. Yeah, and then quick start guide, compliance guide on top. That concludes the OP1WE package design. And it's all paper except for the little back around the mouse, um, so it can be and should be recycled uh, responsibly. Then, yeah, that is that. Mm, okay, so where, where do I go from here? Um, okay, I guess I showed this. Then I can show the Wyatt. <coughs> Sorry. Um, why at OP1 uh, comes in a <laughs> slightly bigger packaging <laughs> compared to two. Uh, yeah, slightly bigger packaging. Um, I want. I mean, this is the the main developer. The main development time went into um, the OP1 WE. Yeah, it kind of was kind of just yeah overtaking towards the end of the development and yeah at some point you do both you do a wireless version even though it wasn't clear was it going to be the op1we but since the solution worked really well for the xm2we um yeah that was the the easiest wireless solution for us to do so this first and more high-end version that shares more with the wired op1 um will be out later this year fingers crossed so yeah, OP1, why? So package-wise I wanted to have the, the cable not to have any kinks, so um, yeah, I will talk about this at some other point in more detail. Also it's all paper, was super important to me. Um, time it took to, de I mean, develop this on the side while you still develop the mouse, not like yeah, we stopped developing the mouse just to develop the packaging, but yeah, just to do this on the side probably took as long as, um, yeah, I could have done a second mouse at the time, the same time. Uh, it was a tremendous amount of work. So, um, same shape. Uh, this is the dark frost, so it's slightly transparent. So you can see more what the internal structure is like, depending on how the light hits it. Um, raised stress relief um, delivered in this pack. Okay, we hit the recording limit, so I changed the uh, focus. Let's see if that helped. So yeah, sorry there has to be a cut or was a cut just now. Out of the blue, um, stress relief, no kink cable construction. 
uh, pretty much on the back you can see what else is inside uh, <laughs> quick start guide then there's gonna be skates skates skins for the sides so if it's too narrow only on the wire though because um and then the higher end wireless as well but uh, yeah the OP1WE like the cost down version or the budget cheaper version whatever you want to call it I won't have this um, so this is but skins for the sides in case it's uh, too narrow for you um, the large skate set with the sensor skate um, also the small skates are applied and um, a screwdriver because the one you need internally uh, is a PH triple zero, Philips triple zero, so it's not that common. And to open the mouse, a larger one, PH double zero, or is it even single zero? PH, yeah, PH zero uh, works to open the mouse. Uh, just in internal, in on the inside, you need a PH triple zero, so it comes with the mouse. Yeah, large skate set, side skins. Um, there's one, there's gonna be one accessory package offering the skins and since they're wireless and wired they're all the same shape and whatnot, they all fit on everything. I have one here, one wired here, been using this for quite some time with the uh, skins on the buttons just to see what they feel like. And it also has the 100% uh, Gates compared to the 99.5 so these are a bit more see-through and yeah it's quite dirty I used it uh, a lot um, okay so I guess I will just since this is the wrong mouse Yeah, these are the actual mice that we had on uh, Computex in the glass container on our booth. I'm not even sure what the name is in English. Okay, so yeah, it, it was in where well, I mean, it was in a box like this. So <coughs> <coughs> sorry, the um. Stress relief was uh, a little bit kinked. Um, that's why the cable also looks a bit uh, messed up. But yeah, that's one thing I wanted to avoid with the um, other packaging because once there is kinks, you can never get them out again. That was so annoying. So it was very important for me to have this kind of stress relief, which is quite a steep angle, and then have a cable that doesn't have any kinks. So you can really. Um, move it freely even if it's just on your desk without any bungee as long as it's not pulling uh, from the back so this is my personal favorite I have to admit it's the white frost version um, we went with a lot of different uh, how to say color combinations um, yeah Long story short, um, I opted for one that is everything has basically the same color and in case you don't know our Dark Frost from before, I do I have some? Uh, yeah, not really, I mean... I only have a uh, modded um, dark reflex, but <laughs> the point I was gonna make was um, they had the black bottom plate, only the mouse core, the mouse itself, I mean the top shell and the buttons were, and the, the CBI button, they are see-through, the rest uh, was black and yeah, for OP1, did a lot of testing if it influences the accuracy of the sensor when the LED is on but I did not notice any negative side effects so 
yeah, we went with this design. Um, try to have everything in one color, which is not that easy when you have different materials. The cable um, is not white, it's a bit grayish to better reflect. I mean, you can't get one to one the same color everywhere. Um, if you have a white mouse from, it doesn't matter who, it's just different um, materials, then the white is gonna look different to some extent. It's really hard to color match and then consistently color match over the different batches. Um, so, yeah, uh, mouse wheels, high buttons, bottom plate, all one color, might even look nicer with the 100% skates, um, since they are more milky and not as white as this, than the uh, USB, uh, the cable um, thingy, all have this color, so what I should be doing of course, no, there is no USB port inside. Uh, what do we have here? We unplug this. Mm, okay, let me. I mean, it's still. There's still too much daylight, I think. So yeah, there is, um, I mean, it's, I can was gonna say there's one LED, now that there's another LED in the front. So there's one LED in the back, uh, it's kind of a, yeah, I don't want to say compromise, I mean, it somewhat is a compromise. So, um, as you know, we have the XM1 RGB, which uh, was, yeah, in demand by... Yeah, it's a long, long story short, yeah, we had to do the, the RGB version and um, so for OP1 I wanted to make an RGB version 2 if it doesn't affect the design of the non-RGB version. So as long as it meant there is no negative impacts on the design of the standard OP1 or I mean back then it was XM1 Mini when we started the project. Um, yeah, so this is uh, the, long story short, this is the end result. So there is uh, one LED in the back that is uh, doing the RGB effect and the other LED that comes on when you lift it is for the uh, CPI indicator. So when it's on the surface, it's off and when you lift it up it comes, uh, comes on. So for the um, LED, for the RGB effect, I mean there's not too many effects, so if you have just one LED, um, it's one in the back. If you like the colorway and you say, wow, this added 0 0.35 or 0 0.4, can't really exactly remember how much it was, it's been a few years. Um, LED, is gram LED is too much for you to have the precise swipes that you are used to have then it's on a breakaway PCB, so you can just clip it off or maybe even wiggle, but I would, I would recommend uh, to use uh, calipers to do this. And something like this, then it's fairly easy if you want to get rid of it. If you like the colorway and don't want the RGB, uh, then you turn it off in the software and you basically have the same as the XM1, uh, XM1, as the OP1, and non-RGB, either black or white. And the different, um, the difference in weight is, like I said earlier, it's from the different shell material and the yeah layer of paint and I mean the coating. That's the other 0 0.6 gram plus minus. So yeah, let's see. Um, OP1 RGB white frost. Then we have OP1 black. OP1 white.
and OP1 dark fro uh, RGB dark frost. Yeah, great. The camera is of course facing this way, and I <laughs> just put everything in there. Great. Uh, let me block this one in as well. Because why not? Also, I'm not even sure my camera is even using a microphone I put on there, but it's perfectly obscuring my view to see the camera screen. So yeah, okay, this is kind of a, a mess with all the cables, but um, OP1 RGB white frost, OP1 RGB dark frost, OP1 black, OP1 white, OP1 WE white, and OP1 WE black so in case the next question is going to be will there be a op1 we white frost or op1 we so wireless version of this and this without the led i mean in any case it's going to be without led no led and wireless because reasons like power consumption <laughs> um for one yeah it's my main reason and performance um, maybe um, so far only. I mean, we start with uh, with with black and white. I mean, I quite like the colorway. Not gonna lie. Also without the without the RGB effect. So that's still yeah, not off the table, but also not on the table. Um, also keep in mind, there's gonna be a, a high-end wireless version to reflect the features of the. Uh, wired OP1 that we didn't uh, talk about yet. So also this has the has the feature of um, being ab able to open the mouse. Again, here is a 100% PDFE skates, and these are the smaller 99.5% uh, PDFE skates uh, without a sensor skate. So this is what also the uh, OP1 WE is going to come with without a sensor skate. So it's going to look like this. Um, yeah, main main difference um, in spec, obviously no battery, therefore uh, 8 grams uh, lighter, so 50.5 for the black and the white OP1 wired, 51.5 roughly, for I mean they're a tiny bit different, but yeah, went with these two values, 51.5 for OP1 RGB dark frost or OP1 RGB white frost. Um, the main two other features are, mm, yeah, I mean sensor, Pixar, PAW, 33.95 versus 33.70, and main button switches, Kaiwa GX. So th these, the wired version has our own switch versus the optical, the optical switch on the OP1WE. Oh, great that I connect the connected mice. So yeah, this is our our own switch. Um, yeah, this is not. But yeah, here you can already and this we used for demonstration on uh, Computex. So yeah, one of the main feature or one of the features of OP1 Wired is going to be that you can say change the switches. There's a, a Huano silent. On the other side, I'm not sure how well you can actually hear it. It was more silent uh, at the Computex environment, <laughs> but yeah, if, uh, yeah, it's not silent. Silent, you can still hear it, but it's a yeah non-tactile experience. It's quite interesting. So yeah, that's uh, the, the the main feature. You can also change the switches on the um, OP1WE. 
and change if you want to um, change the battery uh, position so you can change the weight, weight balance to a certain extent um, but on the OP1WE you can only change the switch to the one that is already inside so unfortunately all the optical switches they have different IR components to work and they're different for Omron, they're different for Reicher or LK and different for Kaiwa also in the way they work some work when the IR barrier is broken the other one is when it's opened I mean closed and opened so you would even need different uh, switch in the firmware if you change from one to the other um, which unfortunately at this stage uh, yeah is not possible so you can change the switch on the OP1WE but only to the same Kaiba GO maybe um, but it's a big maybe we can see if we can offer like a lighter or a heavier uh, switch pack then this could make sense but yeah since they are relatively new switches um, so far uh, that's not possible but yeah could be in the foreseeable future how you, how you say nicely okay so yeah can change the switches um, yeah, it's gonna be a pre-selection um, of what we can offer I kind of avoided during Computex um, it's also one thing people pointed out I try to avoid to say hot swap because for me hot swap means like if you have a server with hard drives one of them dies you can without shutting down the server and take the hard drive rip it out put in a new one and it's automatically being filled with data you can keep using a server with zero downtime theoretically you can use the same change the switches without um, unplugging the mouse but if you short the PCB by handling your screwdriver or whatever else you fall, can fall into the mouse while you do it uh, and you have a short and it kills the mouse um, it's not designed to be hot swappable in the sense that without unplugging the mouse you can just do one move in out and it's done it's a little bit more um, hands-on or complex than than this so it's solder free and swappable but it's not a uh, hot swap in the sense that I try to explain it's a little bit different from a keyboard that you can say it's hot swap because um, you only have the two pins that are exposed when you remove the keycap um, usually there is not more there's not more of the PCB exposed so it's quite hard to short uh, your keyboard PCB while changing switches so that's why it makes more sense to call it hot swap than um, it is for the for the mouse so is it solder free yes you don't need to need to have any soldering skills you need to basically know how to handle a screwdriver to open the mouse and unscrew the switches and then screw them back in um, I show more like closer to the release so yeah that's that so this is pretty much um, probably even more what you've showed at um, Computex with some explanation why and thanks for watching if you have any more questions please join our endgame gear discord and Mm, not sure I have much time in the coming days until all of this is launched but I will try to answer as many questions um, as possible okay then I guess I'll um, cut it here thank you for watching and yeah see you in another video is kind of wrong because you don't see me so <laughs> until then bye bye